last time I was out here I managed to cut up some logs. I'm glad I did now. I'm hoping these will be dry enough, seasoned enough to burn. If not, I'm going to have a real hunt on my hands. I'm still going to have to find other wood. But this could be a real lifesaver if you ever needed to bug out a few preps like that out in the woods, a few blog piles. Very ideal. pine tree that come down a few years ago and I knew it was here and uh, I've just been watching it and uh, he's about ready now I think he'll give me some uh, some good good splitters and it's uh, it really is skills and knowledge like this that could really make a huge difference to part of your bug out plans if you ever get trees down have a look at where they are and take note of what they are could be just a lifesaver because this stuff will burn even when it's wet I'll put that to the test we're going to try and harvest a bit of this take it back to camp with us uh, I've got I know that the rain is coming though it's starting to spit so we're not going to hang around here forecast heavy rain coming in I'm hopefully going to be joined by a friend later on and um, we're going to get this uh, get the camp set up or his system set up and like I said I didn't really want to be worrying about fires um, with head torches so I'm going to crack on with it.
it's skills like that guys that you really do need to know the woodland here is soaking wet and yet we've still got fire that's going to come back to camp with me you can see it's windy here but uh, that's going to help me tonight get my food cooking got the old firebox stove going now I'm just drying up some more wood around it the heat from the fire it's going to boil some water get a ration pack on the go just put our lot in really like them a lot of people don't um, I quite enjoy them but uh, got a cup of tea got this got some pudding on the go now for afters that'll be me set up for the night the winds picked right up now so uh, I'm gonna eat this I'll get right back to you guys Wow well, whoever said winter time camping wasn't fun it's just gone six o'clock and the wind and the rain has just been battering the hammock and tarp set up. It's quite funny. All my kit has been put directly underneath the hammock and tarp so it's all nice and dry at the moment. The wind is trying to get underneath the tarp and lift it but uh, it hasn't been successful yet and uh, probably been gusting 30 to 40. No, I'm not too worried about that. Winter camping can be fun, but it can be dangerous, and you just want to be a little bit aware of the weather. I'm in quite a nice little spot here. I've picked a really good camp spot, sheltered from that high wind, and uh, couldn't get out anywhere from the rain, mind. No matter where you are, that's still going to fall on you. Winter time, I don't think most people are really ever prepared for it and you should go out on your wild camps being prepared take right kit that you've tested and trial throughout the summer to bring it into the winter i've just got a 12 hour glow stick just up there that you can see just gives the old hammock uh, a little bit of light in here I love the sound of the old raindrops just hitting the tarp. Sounds fantastic. Going on to where I'm going to go over the next few months with my channel. For the guys that have stuck with me, I really appreciate it. But there's some stuff that I'd really like to do. And that is winter preparedness and how prepared we are in the winter. How we look at go bags and go bag systems. Some people call them a bug out bag. 72 hours. I actually want to put a bag together that is longer than 72 hours. I want to put a bag together that will um, enable me to, wherever I am, go out and improve my chances of not only survival, but it just improve my quality of that situation that I may be put in. There are some fantastic um, websites to give you advice on winter time camping and winter time preparedness and general being prepared. We cannot plan for major natural disasters. We often get advice that it's coming but it's how we process and use that advice that can determine the situation we're in. Governments all around the world have invested millions and millions of dollars 
including the US government, the UK government, to give us some early indications of bad weather fronts that are moving in. They were spot on with this weather front that was moving in. Most people would stay at home when it's like this. I had to come out because I'm actually trialing some kit to see whether it does work in the uh, in these conditions. I've learned a few things already while I've been out here. Key things that I knew but I needed to reinforce in myself that is being and planning ahead, i.e. the firewood. I knew this was coming, that weather front. I knew what time it was going to hit, around four o'clock, five o'clock. I got here about 12 o'clock. I went, set this up really quick. I went off, I got my firewood. I'm now sat underneath my hammock with a pile of dry firewood. And it was that early weather warning front that I knew was coming allowed me to plan for that. I'm trying to use modern technology to my advantage as a wild camper but also just as an average Joe Bloggs who just wants to be a little bit more prepared. I checked the weather before I come out. I knew it was going to be quite windy. I looked up a few locations of where I could have gone. I actually went to them locations and they were too windy, too wet there already before I got here. So I actually found a little spot down in the valley out of the way, a little bit of shelter. I've got a good wind block, quite a thick little woodlands here. And uh, that's offering me a huge volume of protections up on the tops of the hills at the moment. It's blowing a coolie. I'm glad I didn't set my camp up there. Winter preparedness or winter planning, if you like, needs to really be done and started at home by everybody. There are certain things to improve our chances in the winter. One would be first aid kit. Medical is always a big issue. You often see people with bug out bags or bug out plans. Medical is the key thing to that plan and you, you'll see a lot of people spend a lot of money on gear and they'll, they'll really not invest a lot of money into a first aid kit. It doesn't have to be a super expensive as long as you cover the basics, plasters, a few bandages, maybe some paracetamol, ibuprofen. Basic needs, everyday needs. If you're part of a or in a natural disaster and your plan is to bug out with a team, the first thing that you would always do is check that all your team members are 90% fit. Some may be carrying a few injuries, old injuries, or have medical conditions already, of which they should also plan for themselves. You cannot plan for everybody in that team who has medical needs. However, you can assist by first aid kits. That will help. If you go down through your team, check every individual. Are you okay? Are you fit and well? Yes, I am. Are you? I've cut my hand. Deal with that problem there and then because that problem will become a huge problem to you when you start your 10 mile trek, your vehicle bug out or whatever you want to do. You must ensure that your team is ready to go. You're setting yourself up for sheer failure by not doing that. Once the medical's covered, it shouted, did you have plans of where to go? Your planned locations of where to go may be affected by that weather front or whatever's just hitting you. So you may have to completely change your plan. So always have two or three different plans. Oh, the weather is picking up. Planning for any disaster is really difficult because you just don't know what the disaster is going to be. So a, a go bag or a 72 hour bag, bug out bag. I don't really like the term bug out bag because actually if you bug in, that bag will be a great resource to you. 
knowing that you've got kit in there that you've used, you've trialled and you know how to use it. Just because it was planned to be a bug out bag or a go bag, it doesn't mean that that resource cannot be used at your house. It may have additional lighting in there, it may have additional tools, a multi-tool, a real good piece of kit and anyone who plans to stay in and bug in a multi-tool is certainly the way forward. A big long blade knife is got its uses however if I was bugging in at home I'd be more than happy with a kitchen knife and a good multi-tool. A multi-tool is a key item for urban survival. Out in the countryside an axe, a knife, things like that slightly change. Now if you can find a happy medium, I carry all of it. I carry a multi-tool, I carry a knife, I carry an axe and that all goes into my bag and that way I'm set up for anything. A lot of weight, people will often talk about weight and you don't want to go overly heavy but you don't want to pack light. Packing light, if you pack light, especially in the winter for wild camping, pack light, you're going to get cold. I'm certainly not packing light. My pack does weigh a lot. Can I walk with it? Yeah, I'll walk with it indefinitely. All my kit fits into that one bag, which is really handy. Two head torches, always carry two. They say two is one or whatever, two is one and one is none or whatever. But I always say one is better than none. And that's my outlook on that. Some people can't afford two of everything. One is always going to be better than none. And that's job done for me. If that one item is the right item and you spent the right money on it, it should work. It should last for you, even if you've trialled and tested it. This wind's whipping up all the time. Sorry about that. There is a website out there which is a great fantastic website and I really do like it. It's called Evacuate and I'll leave the links in the description box to their website. I was doing a load of research and I wanted to get the right information to people on different types of kits and winter kits and actually go through some harsh winter camping or a winter uh, go or bug out if you want to call it a bug out uh, kit. We are still working towards a major project on the bug out which is slightly different to my YouTube channel and uh, that is in the hands of my producer at the moment. Um, still waiting for feedback from him. We are tweaking the idea of what we actually want to do. These things take a lot of time and discussions and meetings. That will be uh, a project that is long term. We are still working on it. A lot of you guys will know what I'm talking about. It's not been forgotten. It's still, uh, still very much in the pipeline. Um, we're going to get our heads together and uh, hopefully the next stage will be the filming stages of that. Just waiting for the producer to nod down and say, what can we do uh, or where are we actually going to start doing it and some of the locations that we want to cover. And I know the locations I want to go, which, uh, which is moors and beaches and woodlands. And then he's going to throw in a few locations of where he wants to also try to fill. So I'll leave that um, at that at the moment. However, there will be on my YouTube channel also before that, right throughout the winter, some videos on preparing yourself uh, for the winter. That should start really straight after Christmas. It will be all about planning for winter times, winter time systems, bug outs, camping, winter camps. Leading on to Evacuate, which was a great website, it's all about preparedness and they sell a lot of uh, go bag kits and, and car preparedness kits and it's all about being prepared, it's a preparedness website. I haven't ordered anything from them yet but all the stuff they've got on there I really do like what I see and uh, they've got a lot of advice on there on winter time or all times really what to do in a disaster and how that can help you and uh, it's worth going over and checking out their websites. Um, 
I'll leave the links for them in the description box. Go over at your own leisure and have a little look. And uh, they seem like a real uh, good company. They've got a lot of positive feedbacks from their customers. Um, they sell some fantastic products too. Just uh, have a flick through and I'm sure you'll enjoy reading some of the stuff that they have posted. Uh, especially on their 72 hour go bags and things like that. So I'm going to try and ride out this storm that I'm in at the moment. And winter camping can be a real problem. It's, already, it's only half past six, it's pitch black. You're confined to camp area. Early planning, get my firewood. So I'm not worried about that. I can always make drinks now whenever I want. I have to go out in the rain with the food and firebox stove. That's a huge downsize. I don't want to be getting wet all the time. So it is really, I should have bought a small gas stove or a little alcohol burner. Um, that way I could have just boiled a bit of water. It's not really a problem. I've got a good Gore-Tex jacket on me. It's all about being prepared and knowing what your needs are. And that's what we're gonna cover in future videos. So I'm actually just out on an enjoyable wild camp, guys. Uh, this is December. It's beautiful. Uh, beautiful to be out here um, although it is raining the wind is uh, whipping up you just can't beat hearing the sound of the old raindrops coming down and uh, hitting the tarp it sounds great we'll try and get back to you uh, I should have a friend coming out I'm not sure whether he's going to make it due to these weather conditions it could be a real problem for him and uh, Hopefully he turns up. If he doesn't turn up, it's all good, guys. I've, uh, I'm just having a, a whale of a time out here myself. Uh, whenever I go camping or I'm wild camping, I'm always smiling. It's fantastic to be here. And uh, much better than sitting at home doing nothing. So, guys, hopefully we can get some more filming done. And uh, I'm going to sit back, listen to some music on my phone, and uh, just enjoy it. Well, good morning. Um, slept very well last night. I woke up. It's not very good weather at the minute. I'm trying to pack up in a bit. Um, packing up in the rain is my pet hate. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll get it done. Um, everything got soaked. I'm dry underneath the hammock and top up, but everything outside is soaked. A lot of condensation on the camera and everything. Well, guys. That's it, a good old winter camp done, and it is still lashing down. It was a good night, I really had fun on this winter wild camp. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll be seeing you all on the next one. Sit by my fire, I have a story to tell you Don't laugh, it's freaking me out My feelings are breaking, my soul kind of shaking